um, seeds of happiness. And we finished chapter three, so we are moving on to chapter four. Or actually, oh yeah, we didn't finish chapter uh, three. We are chapter three, lesson number five, uh, page 70. It's far better not to be stubborn and to say, I'm sorry when it's needed. When you consider how much you'll regret losing someone important to you, haven't you had the experience of quarreling with a friend, loved one, or relative with whom you didn't really want to lose contact and then finding yourself cut off from them? I'd like to get together again even now if possible, but I can't. The reason is the strong pride and stubbornness within you. The term for such pride and stubbornness in Buddhism is gaman. Even while realizing that you were wrong, you insist on maintaining your own position no matter what. The attitude is, my way of thinking is right, so I will not apologize. Whenever I talk about gaman, stubborn pride, in a study session, I think of something from my own past. I have a brother two years younger than myself. When I was in the third grade of primary school, he was in the first grade. One day, mother bought each of us a stick of ice cream. The next day, my little brother excitedly took his ice cream out of the freezer and was about to eat it there in front of me. I stopped him. That's mine. I haven't eaten mine yet. My brother and I started to argue. I haven't eaten mine either. I bet you ate yours yesterday, he said. We continued to argue until finally, angry, I raised my fist. Just then I remembered, oh, I did eat my ice cream yesterday. Yet I couldn't lower my raised fist. I pushed the memory of having already eaten my ice cream way back inside and brought my fist down on the head of my frightened younger brother. Then I snatched the ice cream from him as he screamed at the top of his lungs and devoured it. Even today, I can't forget the taste of that flavorless ice cream. People cannot honestly admit their mistakes, even though they recognize them, but seek rather to defend them to the bitter end for appearance's sake. It is this attitude that is called gaman in Buddhism. I think this gaman grows stronger as we grow older. In primary school, we fought with a friend and shouted, I don't know you anymore. But the next day we said, sorry about yesterday, let's have some fun and made up. But things weren't so simple in middle school or high school. The spirit of gaman had grown stronger and we felt, why should I apologize? If we quarrel as adults, making friends again is still harder. Both sides think, I'm not going to apologize unless he does first as the spirit of Gaman grows stronger year by year. It may be something small in the beginning, but because each side is unwilling to acknowledge its fault, so many married couples, friends, and loved ones grow further and further apart. If we could only say, I'm sorry, please forgive me, we wouldn't have to lose someone irreplaceable. Our regrets over such matters seem only to increase as the years pass. Is our stubbornness and pride so great a thing that we must preserve it even at the cost of losing people who are important to us? In most cases, when we look back, we regret having made so much of something so little. Our true self would like to apologize but stubbornness and pride prevent us from saying anything. We regret that people we don't want to lose as friends grow distant from us, yet there seems to be nothing we can do about it. At such times, let's have the courage to try apologizing from our side. It may indeed take courage, but that's not too high a price to pay in comparison with our regret and emotional pain 
at losing someone important to us. Begin with the outward form. Try saying, I'm sorry, please forgive me. It's not too late. If you approach the other person with real sincerity, he or she will respond in the same way. And you see the illustration of a big bear trying to apologize, saying, I'm sorry. And the little pig is very angry because he thinks uh, he was mistreated or whatever. But now that the bear says, I'm sorry, it's like, oh, that makes it hard to continue being angry. So gradually his feelings towards the bear will change. So that's the secret to uh, maintaining good relationships with our loved ones, uh, friends and uh, neighbors and coworkers. Uh, to humble the mind and apologize when we know that we were in the wrong. Even if we were in the wrong 10%, 20%, we can own that 10%, 20% of our wrongdoing. Uh, because everybody has this gaman attitude of uh, stubborn pride, so it's difficult for everyone to come forward and apologize for their mistakes. At least we can initiate that apology and and then the other person is more likely to um to respond in the same way because you know if you think about it people are always mirror imaging our attitude they echo back to us what we are giving them so uh yeah and then uh it's very difficult to kind of tame the ego or the stubborn pride so that's why first parameter of giving becomes crucial the more we give the more our ego gets subdued, realizing that, oh, I'm not the master here. The master is someone else. So that's how we can subdue our ego. And this recitation meditation, obviously. So good job, everyone, for being here. I'm so happy to be able to meditate together. Have a beautiful Sunday. Bye. Thank you.